How are you? Welcome to Tuesday Technique with Paula McCoy. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. So be sure and say hello. Tell me where you're from. Okay, so I'm going to wait a few minutes and let some people get on. So be sure and say hello. Tell me where you're from. Comment something that'll get you in the drawing at the end. Uh, Jenny, my helper, will spin the wheel and pick a couple of winners of some packets and my finished plate. Okay, so be sure and say hello and where you're from. All right. And of course, there's a delay. So, hey, Talisa. Hey, Brenda. How are you? We have got a lot of wind here today and storms coming in tonight. So let's hope we can have no technical problems during live. <laughs> hey, Deb. Hey, Debbie. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so tonight I'm going to talk about color concentrates. I'm going to do this little plate, show you how easy it is to do uh, using your Sumi brush, square shader, and a liner, and a little foam brush to show you how to do a quick edge. Okay, and then um, ask any questions in the chat. Uh, Jenny will refer those to me. She'll read those off as different questions come up. Good evening, Sandy. Hello, Beth. Hey, Jackie, Angela, Jody. All kinds of people coming on. Good evening. Hope you guys are having a good week. I am trying to recover still from uh, working nonstop 12, 14 hour days, trying to get all those orders out of here for Clay Share. Uh, I'm not complaining, mind you. It was just uh, things are back to normal, but my hands have uh, taken the wear and tear cuts and cracks and scrapes and all kinds of stuff. Hello, Miss Ann. Well, you don't, you, thanks for stopping in and saying hello. Hey, Cheryl. Okay, so I'm going to switch my camera unless you guys have any questions you want to ask. I know we have a lot of new people as far as color concentrates. Um, some of you are working on what's considered low fire, 0406 ceramic, and some of you are mid range, which is your six and five, and then some at cone 10. So you should be able to, I, I have not tested to cone 10, okay, but I have tested to the cone six. And there is that blog page. If you're new to our product, be sure and go to the blog page for the Clay Share Con 2022. And there's a PDF out there that you can download. It's got the chip chart that I'd used, what I used on it, all of that information is out there. Okay, and then in every one of the orders, we always put the color chart, which shows you low fire, but your colors, you need to test with whatever glazes you're using. Make sure you run tests before you jump in and do a large project. Because uh, a lot of times your pinks and purples will burn out, meaning they fade, they soften. So you either need to go heavier or it could just be the glaze that you have over them. Okay, it makes a difference. Good evening, Susan, Jeannie. I'm looking at two different screens here. Okay, so Jenny, has anybody had any questions yet? It's hard for me to, before I get started. Okay, so Mariana wants to know, how do we compare our color concentrates to Duncan Easy Strokes? Um, they are very similar. Our color concentrates are in a gel base. There's no clay in them, so it's just pigment, okay, in that gel base as the binder to uh, keep it in place. Um, I know years ago, Duncan used to have some clay in their Easy Strokes. I'm not sure. I haven't painted with Duncan in over 25 years, so, uh, but they would be very similar. I think ours may have a more uh, higher content of color in them. Good question. All right, take a break now. No, Bobby, I can't take a break. Um, I have to leave here on April the 10th, so like, what, 12 days? Uh, for the glass expo. So I'm, as soon as this is over, I'm in glass mode and going to hit that hard. So if any of you are my uh, glass people, make I put a flyer out today on my on all the pages. And if you get your pre-orders and prepay, uh, you'll get a discount for the glass show uh, by April 7th. We need those if at all possible. 
because we are leaving here on the 10th. Uh, we drive out, so it's a two-day drive both ways. And then the show is three days. And uh, go ahead. So Jean Kibble says, do you need to fire them before you glaze? No, you do not. Now, those of you that are working on mid-range, you're going to cone five. So you're going to be working on bisque or that you can put it on your leather hard or dried um, stoneware clay, porcelain clay. Um, and then you're going up to bisque and then you're applying your glaze where in the ceramic is the same way. You can put it on greenware. It's going to absorb. Remember that if your clay body is the more porous it is, more color is going to bond and absorb into it. Okay. So your color is going to be richer if it's on greenware or your leather hard. Okay. Um, it just holds better because your bisque has already started to close and it's not as porous as it used to be. So it sits more on the surface versus absorbing into it. But I'm going to actually glaze this plate that I, um, after I posted that I was going live tonight, uh, in five minutes, I sit and painted this plate and I'm going to glaze it in front of you tonight so that you know how to use our glaze on ceramics. 06 firing, 06, not cone six. And we have another question. Yes. Okay, so the question is, um, can you use Mako AC 310 as a thickener to the color concentrates on ceramics? Um, I'm assuming that's just a normal thickener, which we have one also. Um, ours is a CT color thickener, which works for our glass and our ceramic color. So yes, you should be. If it's just a um, CMC gum type product, if you put a wet finger in it and it sticks to your finger, then that's what it is. Um, there's different grades of it, but yes, you should be able to. A lot of those generic products generally work across the board. It's when you start uh, mixing and matching like a glaze with an underglaze or two different brands on top of each other, that type of thing is where you run into problems. So don't mix apples and oranges, so to speak, when you do that type of thing. But that should work fine. Good evening, Nancy, Sharon. So hopefully, um, Eddie, that answers your question. So Jean, do you have to, you can fire it. Um, if you, of course, if you're on greenware, you're going to fire it to BIS before you apply your glaze for your traditional 06 ceramics. Um, you don't have to fire it. If you're on bisque, you can glaze right over it, which is what I'm on tonight. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. All right. Anything else before I switch? Can CFE be used for Majelica on top of an unfired glaze? Absolutely. Teresa, absolutely. Um, I love doing Majelica or Myolica, however you want to pronounce it. Um, a lot of times what I do is I work on top of a non-moving glaze, which we have a matte glaze. Are you 06 or cone 6, Teresa? Hey, Miss Marie. Tell me, um, and you should be able to do it on your, your mid-range also. What I like to do on my regular 04, 06 is when I have my matte or non-moving glaze on it, I like to add a little bit of that matte medium, we call it, which is our clear matte glaze. I add a little bit of that to my colors to condition them, we call it, so that if you get too heavy with your one stroke product, it won't, it'll be less apt to blister or get rough because that's a common mistake by a lot of people is they really heavily load their brush. They put it down on top of their glaze to do a stroke. And then when it comes out, it's rough feeling that's called blistering. So I add a little bit of my base glaze to my color to do my decorating and that helps eliminate it doesn't completely if you get too heavy but it does help eliminate and you should be able to do that with whatever base you have so you are can you fire single fire to cone five yes yeah if you're painting on the greenware stoneware porcelain whatever you're on and you're decorating and then just go straight up yes you can yes Okay, so Teresa Ann, you're at six. Okay, so yeah, whatever glaze, I would do a test. Put some of the base glaze down and then add, so I'm assuming like a white is maybe what you're gonna use. 
I mean, you could use different ones. It just depends on how much your glaze is going to move, how long you hold at that top temperature would make would affect it also. So do a test. Okay. We have another question. Why do you need a color thickener for color concentrate? You don't. Um, if you're wanting to silk screen with it, um, I have a silk screen video that I did a silk screen on greenware. It would work the same way on bisque. I've done some lives where I did it on bisque. And so you can take and thicken it because it's so thin, it's going to weep through. Okay. But if you are not, if you're just doing brush strokes or color application straight from the bottle, the darker the color, the thicker it is, and you may need to add a little bit of water. Distilled water is always best, um, only because we don't know what types of minerals and things are in our water. Sometimes heavily um, calcium in water will make a difference on what happens. Um, I'm, I just use my tap water, but if you know you have you know, any issues with your water, then use distilled. But no, you can use it straight from the bottle. You do not need a thickener. That's for techniques only. Okay, any other questions, Jenny? Hey, Miss Lindy. Hey, Lindy. Sheila. Okay, I plan to do silk screening with it. So, yes. So, add the thickener. So, in, in Mako, I don't remember if you said it was Mako's or not, but I'm sure it's the same thing as what we have. Um, I think theirs is in a four ounce jar, mine's in a two ounce jar. So, yes, you can silk screen with it. Um, one of the videos I did probably a year ago, maybe, um, was a live, and it's got a uh, orange poppy and I silk screened using our color stroke which is our opaque underglaze but the same um, it would work the same way with the color concentrates just a tiny bit at a time okay because it isn't a gel base so it's liable to thicken up um, you know so just test it on a scrap piece Eddie okay all right so let's get started I'm going to switch uh, my cameras and Turn on my mic. Okay, so just quickly, if you're joining me on Facebook um, and you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you uh, search for Paula McCoy. You'll see the Colors for Earth logo and be sure and subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when we're going to go live. Usually I put out these little announcements. I try to do it one to two days ahead of time, but I have been so swamped uh, I didn't get it done today. Okay, um, and we have a private Facebook group for our glass enamels so if you have purchased the color concentrates through the clay sh clay share con and you think you're doing glass or maybe you already do it or you're interested in it you can ask to join you just need to answer the questions if, if you don't answer the questions you don't get on the board if you don't answer them correctly either okay so and then of course the website coloresforearth.com which is on everything i think everybody has um we have the translucent underglazes, which are the color concentrates, and that's what I'm gonna use tonight, because that's what a lot of you have. And I'm gonna just show you some quick uh, brush strokes with it. On the back of these flyer um, is our opaque underglazes. Okay, and there's 62 uh, of those, 61. And we have a spec also that you can add to either line. So like Gare has fleckles, um, you know, we're a yellow with the spec and a yellow without the spec. I give you the color and I give you the spec and you can add it to these and you can add it to these. You always want to add it to color. You don't want to um, use it as a overcoat on top of anything. Okay. Cause it has an opacifier in it. So it's a nice way to switch it up. If you're doing an apple and you want some specs, then just add um, like a two part color to one part spec, or you can even go 50, 50 with it you'll see the specs when you're applying it. So that's kind of fun. We also have crystals um, and I'm putting these flyers in any orders that go out from here. Um, if you're getting stuff from Mike, he, may, he doesn't have this particular flyer, but we do have crystals that work and we have our lava stones, which are our um, textured glazes, which is kind of like the old sand stars of Duncan. Um, Mako had, what was it? Astro gems, I think. I think that's right. Hey, Sally. Hey, Nancy. Um, so anyway, okay. And then we're going to give away a couple of packets tonight. Okay. But it's a good idea to make yourself a color chart. Okay. This is just my color wheel that I did. And I believe, yes, I in the blog, there is um, the PDF 
for doing this if you want to do it. Um, I just used a square shader and I put three coats. So I put one coat on each stripe, two coats on the next two, and then the third on the last one. So it shows you the different. But do your test tile the way you're planning on using the products. If you're going to do that watercolor look for um, the um, Mishima that uh, Jessica does, then you may want to do a little test as far as that, you know, thin it down into different uh, consistencies, you know, really thin, not as thin. So those are good, useful tools for you to have. All right, so this is the little plate. Um, and I just used three colors. I'm using uh, CC123 Sunflowers, CC112 Candy Apple Red, and CC101 Cobalt Black. Okay, so these are all color concentrates. This is uh, the two ounce bottle that I have here. A lot of you got one ounce sizes, and then we do have pints in it also. And then after I did this, I don't have another plate this size, so I've got to do a larger plate, but that way you can see that one. And I do have like a little uh, turntable under here, and I'll explain why I have that in a minute. Okay, and let me show you this. Nope, wrong one. Sorry. Okay, so this is just my palette so that you can see. I think you can see it in both views, but just in case you want to see um, exactly how I'm loading. Okay, always shake your color before you dispense it. They're in a gel base. They're thixotropic, meaning they congeal. That gel, uh, after they've set, you really have to agitate them to liquefy them. And you'll be amazed at how much sticks to the jar, uh, the inside of the bottle. Right, I haven't put it. Yeah, I'm going to put some new ones out. Jenny was telling me my, my colors weren't in view yet, but I'm going to add some new colors out here. Those are my old ones. Okay, so Sally wants to know full concentrates on the color plate. Yes, so Sally, if you're asking about the color wheel, then yes, I did. I put full strength. It, like I said, unless it's a dark green, dark brown, I may have added just like a drop of water to make it flow easier. But this is pure color. I've not thinned it down or anything. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay. All right. So, all right. So I've got the red and the yellow out. I think you can see those. Um, now, as far as your design, this is just a little flower, okay? And I've done this on a couple of different videos, but for people that are new, we'll go over it again. So depending on how large your, and I'm gonna draw this really dark so you can hopefully see it, how large your flower is gonna be. I start with a circle and then I do a smaller circle inside. So basically you have a donut. Now that can be an oval shape. It doesn't matter what the shape is. Same principle applies. How long will CCs last once you start using them and do they thicken and become unusable? Jean, um, good question. I've had some people that have had them over 10 years and the only ones that um, tend to thicken and need attention, so to speak, would be the browns, okay? So like 186 burnt sienna because of the browns and most people's browns are really thick. And all you would have to do is add a little bit of the gloss medium or NT clear to that and it's fine. Uh, but Shelly has had some over 10 years and they're still good. Just shake and go. Good question though. And I know a lot of people has been asking me um, whether or not if they get frozen, is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. You just need to make sure that you let them thaw out naturally. Don't force them to thaw. Don't add a hair dryer or set them in hot water or whatever. Just let them sit there and let them uh, thaw naturally. Okay. I think you had examples on clay share con, but there is a bit of color shift of the CCs from low to mid range colors. Yes, there is because the pinks and purples, and let me grab the chart here. I just happen to have it handy. Okay, so see here, this is a pink. These three are pinks, okay? And this one side is unglazed, the right side is glazed. And this chart is on that PDF. 
see even the purples change a little bit so that's why i'm saying you really and i put the color on and wiped it back on the high points on these chips okay so you really need to make your own chart on how you want to excuse me how you intend on using the product whether it's just to antique with and wipe back your high points of your texture or if you're going to actually do brush strokes okay but thank you deb for pointing that out okay so back to um however large you're going to do your flower and then you make a y and now you have two large spaces and a small if you divide those two large ones in half you now have a perfect five petal flower no matter what shape you're going to do on it okay same thing applies no matter if it's an oval or a round okay if you want to do a daisy you would divide it again so now you've got your daisy okay so same principle applies no matter what you're doing as far as the shape so this one i just had one flower in the middle i might do um two and a bud on this one just because it's larger now i'm not necessarily going to draw the circle okay because i don't want a lot of graphite on this because you start trapping a, a heavy graphite in between um the bisque and the glaze and that could cause some issues. You could use um, that watercolor marker that I've shown you before, the Statler Tri Plus Fine Liner. Okay. I just find that if I do, I just do my Y. So this is going to be where my center is. And here is my petals. And let's put another one maybe over here. And that's how I started. Okay. Now, a lot of you bought the Sumi brushes, and yes, the large ones are on back order, and they will be shipped as soon as we get those in. Um, I'm going to use the small. Always wet your brush, blot it on a paper towel. It's just like when you wash your hair. You have to wet your hair before you apply the shampoo to it. So same thing of principles apply to your paint. Normally, I don't do brush strokes with the Sumi brushes. I use the rounds, but I'm going to show those of you that have bought those just this quick and easy little flower that you can do with those brushes. Okay, I thought that would be beneficial to you guys. Now, you can single load with one color or you can double load. So what I did on this one was I loaded with yellow and I tipped in red. So whatever you put on the brush last comes off first. Hopefully that makes sense. Whatever you put on the brush last comes off first. So let me show you, I'm gonna load with the yellow Kind of work that in shampoo that brush okay so i've got the yellow in there and i'm going to tip heavy into the red okay a generous tip and i'm going to get rid of this wheel for the moment and i'm going to start on the outside and pull in so i'm going to just press pull and as i lift kind of turn it just slightly turn so that i get a nice little tail on there and let me uh, zoom in while i'm doing this I'm going to go back over, reload in some yellow. I did not wash my brush, tip into that red generously. And I want this one to be out a little bit further and pull in. I'm going to just re-tip into red and come in. So there's one petal. I've just overlapped those strokes to create that petal. Okay, you see how overlapping it. And depending on what color you put on last, see this one I grabbed more yellow. So you see more yellow streaking through. So this is double loading the brush. Okay, so I'm gonna paint it in my Y also. Press, pull, and lift. Retip in red, press, pull, and lift. Retip in red, press, pull, and lift. Now I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna paint the, the end of the Y. And the reason I do that is it keeps me centered and I don't get off as far as where everything lines up. Retip in the red, overlap that stroke. Retip, and I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see the amount of pressure. Press, pull, start to lift, lift, till you get to the center. So you see the Y, and now I'm gonna fill in the sides, and I should have them spaced. I'm gonna go back into the yellow, tip into the red, press, pull, and lift. This brush does not have a lot of spring and bounce. It doesn't bounce back up. You kind of just have to tell it what to do, so to speak. Okay. 
but it can be used. It's just not my personal preference to do a brush stroke. But I wanted to let you know of other things that you could do with it other than just the sumi shading. And that's one thing that I, I like to do is give you other ideas how to use your products, your brushes, instead of trying to sell you another one, show you multiple ways you can use what you've got. And uh, I think you will appreciate that more. At least I would have. Yes, we have a question. Okay, so Diana, yes, this is on bare bisque and it does absorb it. Um, were you on 04? This is 04 bisque and it's just an 04, 06. Is, I'm working on low fire. Did she say hers was high fire? It doesn't say, does it? No. Okay, so yes, it does grab. Now, you could put a white opaque underglaze on there and then do your color. Um, you could also take and just brush on some 04 bisque. Okay, and that's what I'm on is 04 bisque, but mine is only going to an 06. Is yours going to a cone 6 mid-range? would be my question. I mean, it doesn't matter either way. You can still apply it. Um, you know what? I think I have a plate here. <laughs> this one has white. Um, this has our, I don't have the bottle, but it's our colored stroke white, which is an opaque underglaze. And the only reason I know that is because I rub my finger across it and the white comes off. So this is a plate that I had base coated for something, some demo that we did. Mine is cone five, Sharon says. So it, it is going to absorb um, a lot more than some of the colors do. And I think it's just because of the gel base. So you could put a thin coat of um, water on there, clean water, fan brush, and, or sponge it down. You could put, you know, just take your uh, yellow replacement sponge and water, make sure everything's clean and wipe it down just to kind of get it. Uh, condition, so to speak. But I'm going to show you on here, and I don't know that you'll be able to see the difference. I can tell you I can feel the difference because it glides on there. Okay, and you're right. It grabs. So wherever you set that brush down on your 04 bisque, it's going to start absorbing to that area. I will fire to cone 5, but applying it where I had the problem. So I would just see if, you know, even take a mister bottle and uh, mist it with water, you know, just kind of condition. This is real easy to do, especially if you've sketched on a design or a pattern, you can just mist it with water. And this is just that fine hairspray type mister. Don't use those ones that you pump because they put really thick droplets of water and it may stay too wet for you. Okay. Hopefully that helps, but you could apply a opaque underglaze uh, down on there first, which would uh, let the bisque drink that up, so to speak, first before you applied the color. But yeah, wherever you set that brush, you'd be ready to make that stroke because it's going to suck it up right there. Okay, so you'll try misting. Yeah, that would be my first. Yeah, try that. Or like I said, the white opaque underlays or whatever color you might be putting down it could be a lighter color and i'm running into this edge here so i'm kind of tilting any other questions jenny okay no other questions all right so you see i'm just depending on how much of each color so i'm just going back and forth between the yellow and the red Press, pull, and lift. Let me tilt it so you can see. Press, pull, start, lift, lift, and then stop. So sometimes you can get away with um, only loading that base color. I like to see the variegation of color. You can do this with one color. It doesn't have to be multi. Now, I don't know if... Uh, I, I haven't tried this on mid-range but in the low fire ceramic world we always say that yellow eats red and i would think it would pertain to to cone six also um, so anywhere you have yellow and you have red under over with it 
it's going to suck some of that pigment out. So it's going to make it more variegated. Um, if you're doing solid coverage, I say when you get the red on like you like it, add another coat. Um, it works great for like apples, oranges, things um, like an apple where you wanted a highlight on one side. You could stroke yellow over the top of your red that you had on and it's going to eat through that. Um, I can remember uh, them telling us this, gosh, back in my Duncan certification 30 some years ago, we made this apple thing, uh, actually apples and used a cover coat and I'm going to put a bud out here and then came back with uh, Royal Ruby glaze over it. And you could see the streaks because that yellow ate the red. Okay, so I did not change and go to a different color as far as um, the leaves. I just stayed with this. All I did was I reversed it. I loaded in red, tipped in yellow so that the leaves were more um, yellow. So let me put some more red. So Jean is asking if I have any suggestions on how, if you have a piece of this that has a hot spot or a hard spot, how to get it to stick. You know what? I do. If you're using my product, Jean, and I, Jean, I think you're low fire if I'm right. Um, if you'll just put a thin coat, just take your Sumi brush and your gloss medium and just base that area, let it completely dry and then do whatever you're going to do. Okay. Thank you, Miss Lucy. But Jean, tell me if you're right, if you're ceramic, if you're 0406. I think you are, if I remember correctly. But I talked to so many people. Okay, so for a leaf, um, if you need to sketch it on there, you can do that. Let's just put a couple on here. Let's do a bigger one here. And we'll do a small here. And maybe a larger here with one here. Always try to do odd numbers. That's the other um, thing when you're designing. And the other thing that uh, if you haven't ever been told, you should have three levels of your design. So the focal point is the flower. Then you see the border. And then the background is the other. I could have put a watercolor background of yellows on here if I wanted. But if I put yellow behind all these reds, it's going to eat through that also. Okay, 0406, Jean. Okay, so yeah, do what I said. Take your gloss medium. Just put a thin brush, a thin coat in that area. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. You know, of course, when you're cleaning your wear, which a lot of us are buying purchase bis, so that isn't going to pertain. But you know, take some, a little bit of vinegar in your water, you know, when you're cleaning to try to get rid of that hard spot and do a circular motion. Um, that's the only thing that I used to do. I'm sorry, that was medium range. So you're going to cone six, Jean Kidwell. Thank you, Bridget. Okay, so Jenny has put a link to the gloss medium just in case. A lot of you, um, bought that too, but I don't know that that pertains. Well, it should help you on your mid range also. I would think it would work the same way. Okay. So I've got red loaded first and now I'm going to tip generously into the yellow. And for the large leaves, I'm going to start at the base. So this is where my stem is. And I'm just going to do a stroke coming out. It's like a comma and retip in the yellow. And I'm going to do the other. It's almost like a mustache. You see it? The mustache retip in the yellow and then kind of start in the center retip and go to this side and then if you want one in the middle and i'm going to come in with a liner later but there would be your stem okay so load with red tip generously in yellow and these are just small ones so i'm just going to press pull lift lift and as i'm lifting i'm slightly turning my brush to get that point Okay, retip in the yellow, press, pull and lift. See the difference when here I loaded in yellow, tipped in red. Here I loaded in red, tipped in yellow. Look at the difference. I mean, just changing that up is amazing what you can come up with. So if you're limited on colors, this is, a, or you're trying to keep it um, all in the same color, you know, like a monochromatic. So press, pull, 
lift, lift. And like I said, this brush is not made for brush strokes, but I'm gonna I'm showing you how you can do some simple strokes with it. Any other questions, Jenny? Hey Marlene, I'm glad you made it. Okay, so loading in the red, tipping into the yellow. This is another large one. So I'm gonna start like at the center vein and come out onto the sides. It's like a comma stroke coming out and stopping. So you've got your mustache. Retip in your yellow for each stroke and do another one. And then I'm gonna put one in the middle. Reload with red. I have not washed my brush. I'm just reloading these colors because I want them variegating, pulling uh, the streaky. I want one color to go through the other. Now I'm going to add a little bit of red and back into that yellow. Retip. Okay. We've got a bug there. What brush would I normally use is the question. I would use a number four round. This is our Kalinsky round. It's the number 5,000 size four. And let me rinse this one and I'll show you. And it's just because it springs back. It's a um, Kalinsky is a high, the highest grade of a sable. Okay. Um, I don't know that you can see that. When you're rinsing your brushes out, let me go back. Make sure that you rinse and you're blotting on a paper towel. If you still see color coming out of the brush, it's not clean. Go back until you see that completely clear, okay, before you start adding another color because it's just going to transfer to your piece. And I just splattered on my piece. So always dampen your brush first. So this one we were fully loading in the yellow, tipping in the red. Press and lift. See, I can get a finer point. First of all, that's the for more stroke work. And depending the size of the brush depends on how large that stroke is going to be. Okay. Does anybody? Should I ask this, Jenny? <laughs> Jenny's not allowed not allowed to answer. Um, what makes up a brush stroke? Those of you that are new and Sandy, you can't you can't answer. <laughs> you cannot answer. And Karen, I'm not sure you can answer. So anyway, I'm, I'm playing with you because I try to make sure you learn something and you, um, you know, you've, you've heard what I've said. So a brush stroke is the combination of color. So I'm loading two different colors on my brush, the amount of pressure, right? Color, pressure, and motion. So how I'm moving the brush how I'm turning the brush or stroking the brush. So color, pressure, and motion. That is a brush stroke. So it doesn't matter if it's one color or if it's two or if it's three. Pressure determines the size and the motion. So if I wanted a little tiny bud on here, I could just barely go down and barely go down. And look, I've got a tiny, tiny stroke. Okay, so color, pressure, and motion. Color, pressure, and motion. Yes, Stacy. Yay. All right, color, pressure, and motion. Press, pull, and lift. So the Kalinsky or your sable brushes just come back to a finer point so that you can actually do a brush stroke. Okay. So if I were doing an honest to God comma stroke, see how that just, it automatically, I'm not really even, I'm just turning by moving the whole brush. I'm not doing this with my fingers to get it to do what I want it to do. I'm just press, pull and lift. So as you're lifting, those hairs are automatically coming back together if you have a good brush. Do you see that? It's just coming into that nice point. Okay, so that's the difference. If you use matte glaze as a base, you can add your clear glaze to the CCs to make it shine. Correct, Brenda. So if you had um, the matte medium all over the piece and you added the gloss medium to condition your colors, okay, then those areas would be shiny against the matte. You're correct. 
you're correct. And that would be on low fire 0604, okay? I don't think that will work because my clear glaze tends to craze at six, cone six. So, but they could possibly mix it with some of their uh, clears, okay? All right, any other questions before I move on, Jenny? Okay, can't wait to try my set. I can't wait to see what you guys create. It's exciting. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? My center. My center has uh, just dots of red. So to make a dot, I just like to use the handle of my brush. So depending on what size handle, you have different size dots available. Okay. And the other thing is if you um, load for each dot, then you get the same size dots. If you keep going, which we call them graduated dots, you will have different sizes. Okay, do that. Fun. So I'm just, I could have put the center a solid red. I just thought I'd show you another technique that you can do with the handle of your brush. Uh, we do, do sell dot makers. Um, but a stylus works too. Um, you can vary the size with the handles of your brushes. Okay. Um, she wants to know if my clear is zinc free. Um, it my clear does not go to a cone five. Okay. So it doesn't, it, it, you can't use it. It will craze and I'll show you what happens. Uh, because we originally, you know, we're low fire and there's enough high fire glazes out there that I'm not going to go formulate something. Um, I don't know if you can, can. Yeah, you can see it. Do you see it right there on that rim? It's crazy. Like, this is a Mako stoneware mug that I did back in 2014. Yeah. And I showed this on one of the demos um, a couple of weeks back doing the stroke so this is pertains to what brenda was saying this is just the stoneware background and i added the gloss medium to the color concentrates equal parts and did my stroke work i did not put a clear glaze over this area i left it the bare clay stoneware okay this was fired to a cone five straight five but i thought okay i'm just going to put my clear glaze up here at the lip and on the inside well yeah it doesn't work okay does not work but it's kind of nice if you're doing like a decorative vase and it's okay to leave that bisque showing so to speak i mean it's vitreous at cone five cone six okay and you can just do your design work by adding and it's like spot glazing instead of doing the strokes and having to go back over it with the clear glaze just add it add my gloss medium to the color and do the strokes and then you've got shiny against matte would work okay we have another question. Okay, so Mariana wants to know, does the gloss medium minimize the strength of the concentrate or the pigment in it? Um, a little bit, but not that much. They're pretty strong. Um, it's more for the effect of getting the glaze or the glossy look or being able to blend and do the flower technique. So the word medium, which comes from the toll market, I used to be paint toll painting. So medium is an extender, an opener. So that is gonna keep it open longer to allow you to manipulate and move the colors, okay? So, I mean, I can even, well, I, I don't wanna get too off track, but so no, it really doesn't. It just keeps it open longer to allow you to do whatever you're gonna do. So if you're trying to do those, uh, shading that i did on here and it would allow you to manipulate and move that but remember when i did this little decorative dish that's a stoneware this is cone uh, six clay i did not put a clear over the whole thing i just did it on those tips and you can see that it just makes it glossy there i mean the clay is vitreous no water is going to get in there um, the reason you're glazing it is to protect it against oils and stuff like that okay but it would be for what is the lowest temp on the best these will fire 
um, you want the temperature temperature or like, oh, I mean, oh, four is a normal best firing. Um, they're not going to go. I mean, you can't do them to oh, 017, oh, 018, like decals and gold and all that kind of stuff. No, because they need to go to your 04 bisque and then your 06 if you're on regular ceramics. So you're talking about anywhere from what, 1830 to 1960, but they do high fire to the 2165, I think it is. Okay. Thank you, Mickey. Okay. I'm going to switch. Hopefully that helped. That answers Karen and you can message me. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch and go to the Kalinsky liner. This is the number 3600, number two. Again, wet your brush before you start. I've placed some black color concentrate out here. I'm going to just bring over a brush load of water and I'm only going to thin one little side of that color. And I'm working it into it. And I'm going to actually blot that off because I don't want the color up here on my ferrule. I don't want the water and running down and coming onto my piece. Um, so once you mix something, whether it's mixing two colors together, which you can do, you can mix any of the color concentrates together. So if you only had a yellow and a red, you could mix the two together and get an orange color. Okay. And remember, if you're on um, mid range, you can apply the color and you can carve through it. So this is a piece of porcelain that I applied the red concentrate, the 112, let it dry. I put on two coats, I think it was, and then I carved back through it to show my clay body. Okay. Okay, so our, as far as um, other clear glazes, the only one I can get my hands on here in the Fort Worth, Texas area was the HF9 by Amico. Okay. I believe out on Clayshire on one of the boards, somebody else did a kiln opening and she had used a couple of different clears and she said they were fine. So I would test. This is a zinc free that I had, but it's the only thing I could get my hands on. There's such a shortage in containers and product. Um, but just do a test. It's always good to test. Okay. So I've thinned down that black before we get. I got a piece of glitter. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to pull in a center vein. So a lot of times what I like to do is just one side to kind of accent. I don't, I don't want to be too heavy with the black because you don't want it to overwhelm your design. Okay. So I'm just on the very tippy toes. I'll turn it sideways. And so the amount of pressure, remember color, pressure, and motion. So the amount of pressure you put, you'll have a larger stroke. So I can press and then come up. And I like to do just a wavy kind of a line. And the reason I do that is because it's better to be irregular than to try to be perfect. Um, that way nobody notices it if you're not perfect. Okay. So center vein. I am going to put a couple of side veins on this larger one. And then I'm just going to kind of wiggle and go. Hi there from Phoenix. I may be through Phoenix on my way home from uh, Vegas in a couple of weeks. I've got a friend that's very ill out there and I need to go see her. So I'm going to take a southern detour, I think, coming home from Vegas. Okay, so just continue. See how I just kind of give it. I always have, you can usually tell it's mine if it's got a tail on the end of it, I say because I, that's just something that I've always done. But see how just one side of those small ones look nice? Um, if you have too much, it's going to overwhelm your piece. And it's a good way to clean up a brush stroke that went cattywampus on you. Okay. And I keep going back and I'm pulling it and getting a nice point before I start. Did you put a link for this brush, Jenny, or do I need to put it up there? Uh, 3600 uh, number two. Here, I'll show it. Yeah, so that's the brush that I'm using. Okay, it comes in. I'm just split the screen there for a second. It comes in three different sizes. I'm using the size two. 
today. Okay. All right, we'll get rid of that. And they're very inexpensive, where most of your Kalinske brushes, um, they're more expensive because basically it's a sable brush that's been um, treated and refined. And we have a, uh, I have a brush company, Color Brush. That's the reason I'm telling you about the brushes. Okay. And the more you know, uh, you, you know, you're just educated. So see, there's that bud. And then on my um, petals here, I'm just going to come in and kind of do a wavy, irregular. Remember what I said? You don't have to, if you're not perfect with it, then you don't have to worry about be perfect on all of it. So touch and then add some thicker ones here and there. And then some thin and then I'm pulling some fine lines from the center. And do you notice how I'm constantly turning my piece? And don't sit here and try to go over here and work. It's better to turn and make it more comfortable and natural for you. And I'm not using that wheel or the Lazy Susan right now because um, I find as soon as I do that, I'll sit down and it'll move before I can get my brush off my piece. I'm going to use it in a minute and show you how to do the edge. Okay. So just nice and loose. And when you're doing the stamens coming out from the center or these little lines, make them short and long, not all the same length. Any other questions, Jenny? Okay. So those of you that are new, uh, you guys can't hear Jenny, but I can. She's scary sometimes. Um, I call her my voice in my head. <laughs> she actually lives across town over in Arlington and jumps on and helps me with my lives. And if you're coming to the glass show, you'll get to meet her if you come on Thursday or Friday. She is helping us in the booth. And I, if you're coming to the glass show, anybody that's coming to Vegas, um, we're in booth. I posted uh, the fly this morning, booth 717. We're only doing one booth this year versus three. That's a long story, but it's just because of the whole COVID thing. Um, and I have been asked if I want to do a demo up on the big stage. I don't think I told you that, Jenny. And uh, so I haven't heard back from them yet. So I may be doing that on Thursday and Friday, two 30-minute slots. So when I know the more particulars, I'll, I'll know. I'll probably demonstrate color concentrates on thin fire, and I'm not sure what else I'm going to do. Okay, so on this bud, I need some little, uh, something to hold that bud together. So I'm going to just kind of do some little calic up here and then have a couple hanging down. All right. Now, you could go in and you could put black dots in the center also if you wanted to uh, have a variety. If you did that, I would use, this is our uh, dotting tool. We have a set of these um, and you could come in here and add a little more variety and color to those. And even do them on top if you wanted. Okay. Remember that anytime you apply um, underglazes, translucent or opaque, multiple thin coats are better than one thick heavy coat. I don't care whose product you're using. That's a good rule of thumb. And I forgot to do my curly cues. So when you're doing your little curls, you want to lift it when you turn. Um, let me grab my paper again. All right. So when you're coming out, you're pressing and you lift up when you're in the curl and then you can go down. Let me show you from the side. So press and then lift when you turn. And then if you want to go down again, you can and then lift when you turn and then come out. Okay. This is still that same liner brush. And we'll just come in here and do a couple.
Okay. And then I sign and I usually hide my signature in a leaf and I do it with that same brush. The wind is really blowing here. I'm hoping we are supposed to have some strong storms tonight. All right. And then, so now it does take practice to do that. But this with just uh, food coloring and water, you can do that on straight bisque and it'll fire off. So if you haven't been on one of my lives and I tell you that, um, that's a good little trick to practice banding or brush strokes. Just put food coloring in your water, do your um, strokes and then uh, fire it off. Okay, so I had a little, okay, we have a question. Okay, so Sandy says I, she noticed that on my small leaves, I outlined on the same side. Do I always do that? 99% of the time. But if I have a boo-boo that I'm trying to cover up, I might do on the other side. Good question. You're very, you're watching me. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing now is uh, figuring out where I want my border to be. Okay, so this is a raised or a lipped plate. So I divided my plate in half. Now I'm going to divide in half again. And you continue depending on how many areas you want, whether it's a stroke or a stripe or whatever you're going to do, just divide it evenly. Oops. And then you can go again in the middle of that. And sometimes if you've just got some, then you can freehand the rest. But if you need something to visually keep you in line, this is what you can do. And I'm just very lightly putting that pencil mark. This is just a standard number two pencil. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the number 5200, number eight square shader. I hate to show you my hands. I've got so many scratches and stuff. Band-aids everywhere. <laughs> I've been working hard for you guys. All right. So I'm going to put some red out. This is still that candy apple red. 112. What do we do before we pick up paint? Who remembers? What do you do to your brush before you apply color to it? I'm going to wait. I know there's an eight second delay here. Yeah, your storms are coming tomorrow. Yeah, it's kind of moving north and east. Does anybody know what you do? You always wet your brush. There you go, Sharon. Awesome. Wet your brush, blot that moisture out, then fully load with your color. Just like, think of it as washing your hair, okay? And if I were doing brush strokes, I would have the writing towards me so that I could see it if I were going to corner load. I'm not doing that on this. I'm just going to start at the lip of the plate, press down. Remember, the stroke is color, pressure, and motion. So the more pressure, the fatter that line is going to be. And did you notice I'm centering over? Whoops, I went a little cockeyed there centering over my mark. I find that that works best for me. You may have another little trick that works for you. Now this one's a little far over, so I'm going to put it a little back the other direction. But see how nice, and any of you that have used the color, um, the gel base, it glides on. It's, it's very nice, but it does, uh, like somebody said earlier, it does grab and absorb and it doesn't take long for, it seems to dry quicker than other products. I think that would be one of its characteristics. Do you always complete all the inside before you do the outside? Jean, I do. I kind of, in other words, wherever your hand may lay, work from that whether you're going to go from one side to the other or from the center out but that way you're not laying your hand in it yes patricia wet your brush i will see you at the south carolina show remind me when that is is that october <laughs> i don't remember so if any of you are on the east coast i will be at the columbia south carolina ceramic show but I do take glass products there too. They have a competition that's probably one of the largest for a small show. It's the largest competition in the country. 
and I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I'm a judge out there. Dora, she loved all of our products. Thank you. I'm pretty fond of them. And those of you that uh, don't know, um, I bought the company back in 2006 from Patty and Bob Booth, Booth Molds. And we just lost Patty about a month ago. Bob passed years back. So now I did do two coats on my other plate, okay? Because you can see the translucency. So I went with two coats on this one. So now when you do that, you do need to make a little mark or something to keep track. So I like to just put a little mark on the edge so that I know when I get back around that I've got two coats on there. Now, also, you can also put one coat. I still have a lot of product on this side. I can flip my brush over and use that product on the other side instead of going back and loading for each one. Columbia, South Carolina. It's at the Jamil um, Shrine Temple. And it will be a Friday. I don't know if I have it on the calendar yet on the website, Jenny. The calendar's at the very bottom. Patricia, if you know the dates, September 30 and October 1. Okay, there we go. There we go. It's two days. And uh, just like I'm doing for the glass show, if you pre-order, prepay, you get a discount. Um, limited uh, as far as what I bring out there. So if there's something you need, be sure and definitely. And I'll usually be doing some kind of demo in the booth. Depends on if I have help. That one sometimes I do by myself. Okay, so they want to know the Waukesha, my car bridges event up in Waukesha. Yes, I am doing that and I will be teaching at that because he's doing a teaching event. Um, I don't have any of the details yet. Okay, there's my mark. So I've already went around. Okay. Uh, yes. And as far as going back to Alabama, when I come to the South Carolina show, um, I will see if Miss Nell is, um, she's had some health issues. And if she's available, then yes, I will try to do that class that we missed, the lemons down there. Okay. So all I did was take that liner brush and I created a wavy line. And why did I put a wavy line? Because if you don't have a banding wheel, normally I would have probably tried to band that lip here and the outside. But I thought, well, let's just use something simple that everybody has. And everybody usually has a liner brush. So I came in and just did a wavy line. Remember what I told you about the outline? If it's wavy, then you don't have to be perfect because then if you mess up, somebody's going to notice. So just wave it. And I only do one coat on the black. It's strong enough. Your reds are more translucent. Just be sure and don't set your finger down in wet product and end up lifting it off, okay? Am I teaching when I'm self? I would only be doing demo. Oh, as far as a studio teaching, I'm, you know, I don't know. Um, I might, I know they talked about me coming back to the uh, Tryon Art Center. I need to talk to them to see if those dates would work where I could do something up there. Um, if you have a studio or know someone with a studio, um, get with them and get with me and let's see what we can work out. Uh, the other places, um, Miss Felicia Blair's studio, which is um, out more towards Myrtle Beach, I believe it is. Um, I talked to her about possibly doing a class, and she is a, a glass studio. I just missed this one here. Okay, so you see how easy that is and how we've just taken different elements, and it just looks like you really knew what you were doing. Very little skill as far as uh, what I think anyway to accomplish S some simple strokes switching up your colors and you wouldn't even have to um, have let me grab some more black here um, the square shader you could do that with a um, foam brush 
and I'm going to do the foam brush to show you the edge in just a second, but you could do wide stripes with it. You can actually cut those down and create a different size out of it also. All right, so you see that's almost done. And then all I did for the line to separate the inside and the lip of the plate was to do the same thing again. And I just started here and just kind of waved it. Now, like I said, if you had a banding wheel and you're good at that and you want to do it, but this is something that anybody can do. And you don't have to have a whole bunch of different tools and things. Now, I do make sure that those lines touch. So wave it enough that they do connect it somehow. You don't want it floating. All right, any other questions, Jenny, while I'm finishing this up? No questions. All right. So do you guys like this? Do you like the idea? Can you use it? Hopefully it's, it's something quick and simple. And you can keep adding and adding and adding. I mean, and make it as complicated as you want. But hopefully it gives you some ideas, maybe something you didn't think about or you're new to brush strokes. And really, it's not that much of a stroke. Uh, then I just came in and I did the dots. Uh, I don't think I'll put I don't know if I will or not. I want to show you the band around the edge. So this is just you can do it with any kind of banding wheel. This is just a lazy Susan type thing. OK, and then I'm going to use these really cheap, like 25 cents foam brush. And mine is really old. And I have black in it because I had it in here earlier when I did my edge. There's a, a edge to it. OK, so in the middle, it's the hard wood and plastic. You never want to have your brush pressing against that. So it has a tapered end to a triangle. You want to make sure that the edge of your plate is going to stay like right in the middle of that little wedge. You don't want it back here on this area, only out here. And what that does is conform, get that paint off the brush or I'll have it all over me, to the top and the bottom. Okay, so it's going to be sitting right here as you move it. So I need to get some black out. Uh, again, dampen your brush, even though it's, and then I just kind of work that black into my foam brush. You don't want it dripping. Okay, so pay attention. This is not going to be touching, only down here. Okay, I think I've got that where you can see it. So the, the wheel is just an aid to turn the piece. You don't need a banding wheel, but a lot of you have um, the Shempo or the Colorobia banding wheels. Um, I like the one that sets up higher, but this is the one I have here. Here. And I notice I have a line that doesn't touch, which is going to bother me. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of pressure and just turn the wheel. And what that does is gives you on the top an edge and on the back an edge. And it's perfect on that edge. Now, it doesn't matter what shape. If this was petal shaped or triangle or square, same principle applies. Just set that down and just turn your wheel whatever you've got just don't come over the top or over the bottom you want to keep it same amount of pressure i see i did that so you can you see how that one's thicker so you'll have to go back and make all of them thicker if you do that i did that on purpose right guys ha <laughs> ha no it's called talking and trying to do it at the same time and you want to go around it a couple of times you can turn your brush over because you have color on the other side. You get to use it also. Now, if you feel like it's coming off on the edge, I have also been known to go back and kind of just tap that edge. Of course, you should let it dry between coats. OK, so that's how you do that. Does that give you? But you can do that on a square. That, Like I said, you could even do it. Um, you know, even if it was, I mean, you could, all you'd have to do is just walk it around. Okay. It doesn't matter what the shape is. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Jeannie. Yes. Looks fairly easy, especially to teach. Yeah. If you're, if you teach, you have a, a group, um, you know, I have a line here that's bugging me. Okay. I think I've connected everything. 
All right. So hopefully that gives you, and I want to show you how to glaze real quick and then we're done. Okay. So I'm going to move that one out of the way. And I've got this one that, and I did not get a cup to put my glaze in, of course. All right. Always shake your product. And I'm going to grab another palette. And I'm just going to put some glaze in the middle because I failed to get a little cup. Usually I pour some in a cup. Uh, soft fan brush. This is our uh, number 10. This is an older one. I think six and eights. We have them all the way down to a two. And what do we do first? We wet our brush before we go into our product. Pull the moisture out on a paper towel, which I'm doing off to the side here. Now, if this is set, normally I paint, I glaze right away. If this is set for a while, where'd my mister go? I will take the water and I just missed it. And also, that's a little trick to show you what it's going to look like when it's fired. For your traditional 0406, that will work. Okay. Like I said, you need to do your, um, your test tiles for your uh, cone six. Okay. So that just brightens it up. What happens is a lot of people, as far as your regular ceramics, they'll say, oh, let it dry till tomorrow and um, your colors won't smear. I beg to differ with that. I was taught many years ago by Bruce Locke uh, when I worked for Hobby Colorobia that if you missed it like this, so if I came back in the morning and this was bone dry, I would miss it. Wait till the wet look goes away. So if I tilt this, there is no what I call water puddle look to it. There's no wet, wet look. Once that's gone, then I can come in with my product. The reason most people end up smearing is because they overwork the area. Okay. So and I'm going to hold this. Okay. So I'm going to lay the color down. One, two. Get more glaze. One, two. One, two, maybe three. But look how fast it's absorbing that glaze. And this is a, and it's a probably from Bisque Imports piece. Some Bisque absorbs more than others. Just one, two, maybe a third. Don't play with it, okay? Because as soon as you do, you're going to start smearing your color. And especially on the edges, that's the other a lot of times i will go around the edge and i'll just tap the color because it's concentrated it and it's called color concentrates okay but you do have a concentration of color out there and as soon as you start dragging it along there what happens is it's going to pick up on your brush and you are going to smear it okay what about sponging the first coat uh you could as long as your sponge you've wrung all the water out and you know you just don't transfer any of that water to it but you could it just depends on the glaze you know whether or not it's going to move enough in the firing that it's going to level out okay that would be my only concern if it's, if you're going to see some highs and lows but if that's something you're used to doing then sure but if you'll try that misting you won't and do what I did. I, I I think it would apply to anybody's. I mean, this is how I glaze everything I glaze. Okay. And then I come back. Ours is a two coat clear. And you will see your colors through it if you're working on your 04, 06. Okay. And another thing, and I don't think you can hear it on camera, but if you start hearing that dragging motion, or the scratching motion, then you need to put more product on your brush. Get away from it. Okay. You're too dry with whatever you're applying. Okay. So there is two coats of my clear. Easy peasy. I do have this on the end of the yellow rose uh, YouTube out there. There's a, a long uh, section at the very end where I talk about the glazing also in case you want to check that one out. All right. So what do you think? You like it? Love the plate. Thank you, Jackie. All right. So if I wanted to put those red dots in, I can come back and do that. Um, I'm going to let Jenny uh, spin the wheel. What time are we at? We're good. Um, okay. 
So let's do that. We have two packets to give away. Uh, one of them is my rustic Italian platter. So it's got pears and plums and olives, olive leaves on it, watercolor background blending. So Jenny is going to uh, spin and we're going to give that one away. Hey, Lisa, you were late. <laughs> you missed it. You'll have to go back and watch the replay. <laughs> All right, so she's going to do that. Uh huh. The winner of that packet is Mariana. Mariana G H. Mariana, I think you're new to me, so go to either Messenger and message me your address. If you'd rather have the PDF, I can send you that via email. But send me all your shipping information, email, so that I can send that out to you. Or you can email me at info at coloursforearth.com or ceramicsbypaula at gmail.com. Okay. All right. And the next one is one of my new ones. I just taught this in Tulsa a while back. This is my Blossom Blooms. This is actually on Greenware. There's carving. Um, there's a little stencil type thing that we use. A lot of brush strokes, different ways to use different brushes. Uh, flats, um, chisel edge, comma strokes, a whole bunch of stuff. So Jenny's going to spin the wheel for that one and tell you who wins. So if you win, just make sure you message me your information so I can send those to you. Diana Forbes, F-O-R-B-E-S. Okay, so Diana, I'm not sure if you're new or if I have your address, but send me the information in Messenger or email, okay? And Jenny's gonna post, um, Hey, Dan, I didn't see you on there. Hey there. I didn't watch with the closed captions while we were, oh, <laughs> okay. So I would have to wait till these red dots because they're still shiny and wet before I could glaze this. And you could go to the back and you could, um, you know, carry your stripes over. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do, but you can see how fast this is drying. There's one area that's a little light there. So I'm going to add just a touch to that. But that's on regular 0406 ceramics. You will see your color through it. Don't keep adding another coat or you're going to get too heavy and uh, you'll end up milky. Okay. Okay, we have a question. So Cheryl's asking, you don't have to fire the colors before glazing. No. Uh, when I posted that I was doing a live tonight, I sat down and in five minutes I painted this and all I did was missed it. You saw me do that and I applied the glaze over it. Could you fire it? Absolutely. You can take it back to an 04, 06, whatever you happen to have going to set the colors and then come in and glaze it if you're more comfortable with that. Or if you've done your color decoration on greenware, which you could do because we were straight from the bottle, you could put that on greenware, fire to your 04 and then do your glaze at that point. Okay, I have another question. Can you purchase the packets? Absolutely, Nancy. Thank you for asking. I have over 300 designs that I've done uh, over the past 20 some years. Um, so uh, they're under, I don't know if you can do that, education at the top and then uh, technique packets, Jenny, if you wanna put a link to that page. There's some that are digital. If you'd rather have it digital and not pay shipping, I haven't got all of them into PDF form on the website because I do all my own web work. So if there's something you want that way, just email me and say, hey, Paula, I'm looking at placing an order. These are what I'd like to get, but you don't have them as PDFs and I will upload them. And that's what I usually do. As soon as somebody orders one, then I usually go out and try to make that available. I'm trying to get rid of paper copies and just go to that. And then we also have um, uh, the blog has different patterns that I've done on. So this is one that I did in the fall. So this is the pumpkin trio and it's on the blog, the patterns out there, the colors I used, the video is right there on that page. And any of the clay share con videos that I did 
even with Jessica, those are all on that blog page that's ClayshareCon, okay? You can find all four videos that pertain down there, okay? But this one's out there. This was done with color strokes, but no reason why you couldn't do it with color concentrates. So that was a free one. And then I have uh, some that I've done Zoom. So this was a Zoom class. This is all done with color concentrates and gloss medium and uh, get my dreamy background. This does, uh, we do some brush strokes. You learn how to do three color blending um, and then the band on the edge. So you can buy the PDF, you can do the PDF and the digital video, you know, either one. So you can um, find those all on the website too. And I'll have other ones eventually when I slow down, I'll try to do some more. So Jenny has posted a link there for you. Um, it's a learn here. You can find ceramic glass, um, but there's no reason why you couldn't, and I'm going to switch my camera back, um, why you, um, hmm, we'll get rid of some of that. Okay. I'm going to leave uh, this in the corner. And I'm going to turn, turn on, on my mic, because <laughs> usually I forget to switch my mics. So, um, Say that again, Jenny. I'm sorry. Oh, you put the link for the one. Okay, so she's putting the link to the Blossom and Bloom one um, out there. So you can just, uh, you can do searches at the top for keywords. Um, but like I said, there's over, over 350 or some. I used to do retreats until COVID hit. And um, years ago, I was doing six of them a year, 15 people plus myself in like a bed and breakfast. And then we just lost that. So Jenny and I need to go looking for a new, new place. She had some ideas. So we may do that um, soon when everything kind of gets back to normal, whatever normal is. So I hope you enjoyed the project. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them here. I will try to answer it. Sometimes Facebook is weird about how I go back and try to answer everything, but I usually try to skim through them to make sure I haven't missed anything uh, that needs to be answered. Uh, you can always message me and you can email me if you have any questions. If you wanna see something demonstrated, put it on my page on Facebook, you know, say, just tag me, Paula, I'd like to see this on your next. Thank you, Dan, wonderful instructions. <laughs> None other like you, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Maybe I'll get to see you, Dan, you'll come to Waukesha and I'll get to meet you in person. You're welcome, Deb. Hey, John Phillips, I may see you when I come to North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to let Jenny go. Um, I've got paint to label, so I guess I should go do my daytime job again. <laughs> so I will see you next week um, unless something happens and I'm swamped with the glass stuff, but hopefully I'll have something new to show the glass people what I'll be uh, putting out at the glass show. Okay. So if you're a glass person, one of my glass peeps, you need to have your pre-orders in by April 7th, please. And if you pre-pay, pre-order, you get a discount. So be sure and do that to save some money. Okay. All right. Those that won, make sure you message me. I see Mariana has already messaged me and Jenny will tell me who the other one was and hopefully they will message also. Some of the kits are still on sale. Um, I know the kit 41 uh, CC is still on sale. Um, I don't remember how much it is, but that kit there is now on sale. I think it's 150 is what it is um, out there. I'm going to hide that. Oh, made me little. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, so on YouTube, that is a link that you can just click on. So anyway, if you have any questions before you order, you just unsure, um, email me. A lot of people have. Pick up the phone and call me. Okay. 817-677-5020. All right, guys, have a good evening. Thank you, Jenny, Jeannie, Jean, Jeannie Bell. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, all right, Jenny, thank you too. And uh, until next week, happy painting.